What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Penn. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use PlayStation Remote Play to enhance your live stream experience. Perhaps you don't have the money for a dedicated capture card. And I'm going to be showing you a browser based option and an option that you install on your computer, which is called OBS. So this can definitely be a two part series. Now I'm on my PlayStation five and let's get into it. You want to go to settings and you want to scroll down the system and you want to scroll all the way down until you see remote play. Now I have the software already installed on my computer, but I'm going to uninstall it just so I can walk you through the setup process. It's real easy. And once you get it installed, everything else will follow along. You want to just make sure that enable remote play is ticked on. So for those of you that's watching this, you will do this on your actual monitor television. Um, however you have your setup and you just want to make sure that this enable remote play is turned on and you will know that it's turned on when the button is over to the right and you see like that gray color and you know like a white circle and that's it on the playstation 5 side once you do that you're also going to be needing your playstation 5 controller for sure and the charging cable that came with your console so I'm going to be showing that um, in the next transition and we're just going to be getting started from here. All right, so all you're going to need for this is of course, computer, um, I'm using Windows 11, you know, laptop, I'm using a desktop. You're going to need the PlayStation 5 controller and you're going to need the charging cable that came with the system. Now, if for some reason that you lost it, the connector type for this is USB A to a type C connection. You plug one end into the controller and you plug the other end into an available USB port on your computer. And that's really it. And as you can see here, it's in like an orange status light up. That means that it's charging and it's usable on PC. Okay. All right. Now in the next transition, I'm going to be showcasing a few different options. And one thing you may want to consider when you're getting into streaming, when it comes to your Twitch, your YouTube, or whatever presentation that you wish to go after. All right, and in this segment of the video, these will be some things that you can consider. Now, this is PlayStation Remote Play. For those of you um, that have been viewing my channel for a little bit, you've known that I've done live streams in the past on both a gaming PC, a PlayStation 5, and a little bit of Xbox Series X, but mainly PC and PS5. Um, I do like that combo. Some of those PlayStation streams included a capture card, and some of those PlayStation streams included PlayStation Remote Play. And most of you did not tell the difference. It was besides one person, and shout out to Sober Harmony. You don't have to use the capture card if you don't have it in the budget, have it in the plans. Uh, you can utilize your available resources along with your network that you pay for to be successful in this space or to get up and running. Um, so I will have all links in the description. What I have here is, of course, the main site of PlayStation Remote Play. My internet service provider is Xfinity. I do believe if you're going to be using 
um, a resource and an application that revolves around your network, do a speed test so that you can get an idea of what you want to do or how you want to go about it or what to generally expect. Then I use a browser based streaming platform um, called Restream. I pay for the professional plan, but however, the free plan can work for you or the standard could work for you or a different plan could work for you. And also my main tool when it comes to video game live streaming is OBS Studio. And I'm sure everyone knows about that. It's a free and open source video and recording live stream software where you're able to get your content out in an efficient fashion. All right, so first, Let's do a speed test. Now th this is cable broadband, so it is shared throughout the neighborhood. And um, it's up and down, you know, it's not perfect, but it does get the job done. Right. So this is from the browser, things like that. Um, Xfinity speed test. Or to show more and this is important when you have to factor in what plan you may be choosing if you want to go the browser based streaming route if you want to go in a higher tier or even when it comes to OBS studio all right so it gives me a lot of my latency my protocol my host which that's cool one moment here all right, so I have a speed test app that's um, directly from the Windows Store on this operating system. I have Xfinity, have Comcast, and you guys watched my channel before, you generally know where I stay at, but. All right, so it's about the same, give or take. And it fluctuates uh, depending on what's going on. It'd be near the 950s, or it'd be an example as you see here. I'm showing you different examples of what can you expect when you do these type of tests when it comes to your internet service provider. All right, so, and it's at nighttime too. So everyone's home, everyone's on the internet. This is just what I'm getting but I pay up to a gig when it comes to the download. All right. So what I'm going to do here is go to remote play. I'm going to download and I'm going to go to windows PC. You're just going to have to um, agree. See, I'll be putting this on my desktop. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Okay, let me move that over. All right, so remote play is right here. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to run as administrator. It's going to install that to my computer. I'm going to follow the prompts. You can just hit next. If you want to change your installation directory, that's fine. I'm going to keep it at default. Hit next. And you can just click install. Install pretty fast. And what you want to do is launch PlayStation Remote Play. All right, so you'll go ahead and do that. And it's going to say select the last console you connected to or find other connections. So PS5 760 is going to be my PlayStation 5. I only have one PlayStation 5. Um, so that's what I'm going to select in this case. Let's 
going to say checking the network and boom there it is real fast and efficient now i will say this some of you may get prompted to log in if it's your first time doing something like this where you're going to enter in your email and your password to your um, sony or playstation account that's for your protection and your security but as you see even when i uninstalled it and reinstalled it to my computer it immediately recognized my hardware that's available on my network and it was able to quickly launch my PlayStation 5. Okay. Now, if you have any questions up to this point, I advise you to either pause the video as you're watching or rewind it because I'm getting ready to go into the fun stuff. The browser based streaming tool. We have OBS for an example, and this will most likely be a two part series. So in the next transition, I will begin into that and I'm going to show you how to set this up properly. All right. So at this segment in the video tutorial, I'm on restream. Um, I'm logged into my dashboard. So when you actually um, look into restream, you know, you sign up for a free account, you're going to see something similar to this. Now, this this thing's a beast. Uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing, you know, the tests and the streams I did so far. All you need to worry about in terms of testing and experiment with this setup on your own hardware and your network is you want to use the record video and audio. You want to just test something without going live, but I have to worry about nobody seeing you mess up or anything. So I'm using OBS while I'm recording this video. So it may give me a warning that says something like, um, hey, you're using a different software. It didn't this time, but it can occur. Now, what you're going to do here is that, and that's honestly my icon. So if I go to disable camera, all right? which you just see a blank screen right there. So you want to go down to where it says share screen. And here you can do entire screen window, things like that. So if you do entire screen and do it like that. Pick a screen screen one. So basically, you want to pick the screen where you're going to have your PlayStation remote play showing on. So if you have different monitors, just make sure you're selecting the proper screen in this case. Now, granted, when you are sharing a screen this way, it is using additional resources. Uh, you may want to look into making sure you're having sufficient RAM, you know, a decent processor, not the best. And if you're going to be sharing things out to your audience, you got to make sure that your system is efficient or up to the task. So, and my apologies if you hear someone's riding on their motorcycle, uh, if you do hear that. So, as you can see, and you see Studio Restream IO, and I left that out the bottom, you know, intentionally, um, for the full effect, you can enter full screen and as I move my mouse away, you can see the effect and I can also drag this to a different monitor like that. And when that goes away, there you go. You have your recording and you can um, live stream this way. Now, this is just giving you the overall general setup, things like that. but. You use it pretty snappy, pretty smooth, but here's the catch. When you use this option, you would not be watching your remote play. That's going to be for your audience. You're going to be gaming on the actual display 
that you're going to be gaming on usually. So for me, it would be my Samsung S90C. You know, I got that in 77 inches. But I will use this as a way to broadcast to my viewers and to my audience. So the viewers don't really get any lag because it's a stream. But I don't get any lag as well because I'm not watching the remote play session. I'm playing on my native display where my PlayStation 5 is hooked up to directly to the television. So this is powerful because if you're on a desk setup and I, I have a television here as well, I can have the stream on my other monitor. Then I can play on my main monitor, which is right in front of me. So what I'm going to do here is stop sharing. Do that. Let that out. And as you can see, still have Restream open. And if you want to start recording something for a test, you can do Control G or you can just start recording something. So <clears throat> that's the gist of it. Um, you go here to settings or you press S, it's going to be like this gear icon. Um, you can enable your camera here, mute here, share the screen, which I just did. You can do settings. And for video, you know, I have my OBS virtual camera, but you can choose a different webcam. I do have the Insta360. And then for audio, you can come here to select your mic. And this is very powerful. So for here, uh, I got to change this. Usually I'm on earbuds. I'm using a blues. Let's see. And with that, blue snowball with that. That's usually how it is for me. And you can choose virtual backgrounds, things like that, shortcuts. Very streamlined, uh, very easy to, you know, pick up and learn um, in an efficient way. All right. So in the next part, what I'm going to be doing is showing you the OBS side. Also going to be showing you um, the final part to the restream. But this is just to digest the initial conversation um, that you want to have with yourself when it comes to your setup, what's your plan, what's your goals, and how you want to execute it. I just showed you that you don't need a capture card. It's about your network and it's about doing your homework. Until next time, this is Penn Sign Out. Thank you for watching and peace.